Training tempo is one of the most underrated components when it comes to optimizing your plan. A lot of people look directly at their training split, exercise selection, set and rep schemes, and while all of these things are important, if we don't factor in the tempo, there are a ton of holes directly in your programming that can lead to a lot of issues down the road. So what do we need to focus on with tempo? From a basic standpoint, what we have to understand is what the dumb numbers actually mean. If we have a tempo that is three, two, one, zero, here's what we're looking at. The three, that's the eccentric component when you're lowering the weight down into place. We all know that the eccentric, we're actually stronger than we are in the concentric action. So if we minimize that eccentric, with all of our training and don't take an emphasis on what tempo we're using, we're leaving a huge gap in the point where we can actually develop a ton of strength, eccentric control, and improve many biomotor abilities that are gonna help lead to improvements in strength and performance across the board. The second number we're looking at is that transition. So imagine on a bench press, when we're down, when we're holding position, do we go immediately up where we're at zero or do we have a pause? This can actually eliminate the stretch reflex and build dead stop strength. Given that most injuries take place at the very bottom of a rep, at the bottom of a squat, um, not holding position at the bottom of a bench press and having elbow flare, this is an absolutely crucial time to develop strength and stability in that most problematic area. And of course, again, build that dead stop strength. The third number is that concentric component, how fast we lift up. Now, if you see the way that most people lift in the gym on a regular basis, they're down, up, fast no thought process at all into the way that they're lifting. So by and large, you can do a lot of different things to manipulate the concentric tempo. Most of the times a one, a one second tempo on the ESA and the concentric is gonna be crucial. Um, and that's when we don't have to navigate quite as much. However, we can add things such as a slower, obviously concentric tempo, say two seconds where we're creating more tension and time under tension directly with the rep. Then that fourth number, say if we had that three, two, one, zero tempo, that would be do we pause between the transition of reps so if we're doing something with a zero at the end, there's gonna be a consistent component without a pause during that transitional point. If you're doing something heavy, a lot of times that one second transition can be great and it starts to happen naturally as you reset and focus on optimizing technique. But again, all four of these components and understanding the numbers with training tempo are crucial if you wanna make the biggest impact with your training and with your progressions. One of the best ways to leverage tempo and using it as a progression tool is to keep your weight consistent from week to week while adjusting your tempo. See, your body doesn't know weight, it doesn't know reps, it knows tension that it must create, and it knows time, or the time under tension, which obviously create the metabolic stress and the mechanical tension that we know drive muscle growth, and to an extent, some gains in terms of strength. So here's what we can do. We can do an exercise, and during the first week, we have a tempo that's three, zero, one, zero, meaning three down, no pause, one second up, and we go right into the next rep. Keeping that weight the same, as long as we're working to that point where we're nearly at muscular failure within that set and rep range, we can then increase that training tempo to create more time under tension. Again, we can get to a different amount of mechanical tension with an exercise if we keep the weight the same, but we manipulate the time in which we're under that tension and the tempo is a way to do it. So the next week it could be three, one, one, zero. The following week, four, two, one, zero. And so by adding a second with each of these progressions, we're gradually having sets that are taking the longer duration and with that same amount of weight, which should be challenging and within one to two reps of failure, we can create that muscle building stimulus that we need to get the body that we want. Here's what it looks like. Three, one, one, zero. Okay, a three, two, one, zero. So we got that three second eccentric, two second pause, and a one set second concentric. Now the final example here would be a four, two, one, zero tempo progression, four second eccentric, two second pause, 
one second concentric tempo, and again, no pause between the reps. Now, we can also have intra-workout tempo progressions. We can have an ascending tempo progression, which means we increase the time under tension via manipulation of the tempo by increasing the time that it's going to take to do an individual rep, and we have descending. Ascending tempo progressions work better for isolation type exercises when we're trying to burn out, we're trying to improve that mind-muscle connection and go directly towards muscular failure. An example of this would be starting with something like a 3-1-1 one, one tempo, so that rep takes, you know, five seconds. But as we start to build more stress, more fatigue, and we want to cheat on those reps, well, we can actually focus on slowing down that tempo and go to a 3-2-1 tempo or a 3-3-1 three, three, tempo. Through manipulating these variables, we're creating more met metabolic stress directly in the tissue itself, improving that mind-muscle connection, and creating a different form of progressive overload. Now, if we want to do a descending tempo progression, what we do is we start with something with a slower tempo, and then as fatigue sets in, we can start to use it as a way to manage that fatigue while still keeping load heavy. This is one of my favorite things to do on heavier exercises. As an example, say you're doing an exercise for six to eight reps with a three, two, one, zero tempo. The first two sets, you're gonna go three, pause for that two second hold, and then one, okay? Now, on that final set, what we want to do is maintain that level of load and we have a shorter overall rep because that fatigue has built in. That way we can still focus a little bit more on the mechanical tension aspect while manipulating tempo and still driving overall progression in the gym. So in this example, I'm going to do a 75 degree incline press and we're going to do a 3-2-1 tempo for two work sets followed by a 3-0-1-0 tempo for the final one. This way, we're leveraging the fact that we have a heavy load, we're taking advantage of a ton of mechanical tension, but also working with that fatigue. What this allows us to do, allows us to push these weights a little bit heavier while maximizing the control and the form in which we are executing the lifts. Set two, three, two, one, zero tempo. Final set, thank God, three, zero, one, zero tempo, so we do not have that two second pause on the bottom. 